Good morning everyone, lovely to see you all there. Hope you all got your waves that I just managed to do. It's amazing this Facebook thing, isn't it? Amazing. Lovely to be with you all today. Good morning and welcome to today's thought for the day. I'm Nikki Davies and I am associate priest here in the Avon Valley churches. And as we like to remind people that we are seven churches on the northwest edge of the New Forest. I don't know about you, but I am experiencing times when it is hard to feel at peace. As we continue through this lockdown period, that feels really hard to find that peace. So I wonder if we can all begin by taking a deep breath in and just holding it for a few seconds and then out. As we breathe in, we can become aware of the spirit of God within us and it can help to settle us. Today, I want to use some words from the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. I like their liturgies as they can be very poignant and help to give us a different perspective on our faith. For me, it helps remind me that God is closer than we can ever realise, present with us always. It's lovely to see all your comments. So I'm going to begin by lighting a candle, and you might like to do that too, if you have one to hand. In the Celtic tradition, the personal signing of the cross is very important, helping us to recognise the sacred within ourselves. And of course, I think the last uh, thought for the day that I did, um, I tried to encourage you all to do it. So perhaps you might like to do it again today, if you like. We're saying it at the beginning and also at the end. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. And then they have a declaration of faith. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I want to read uh, the reading, which is set for today from the lectionary. If you have a Bible and you want to look it up, it's uh, Luke, and it's chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. And I'm just going to adapt it just slightly. Oh, thank you for that hug, whoever that was. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was ruler of lots of other places with very difficult names, you can look them up. And it was during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptised and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed to you. Soldiers who asked him as well, what should we do? And he said to them, do not exhort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. Gosh, there really is so much in that reading today and I really would um, uh, recommend you have a reflect on it on your own again. That's Luke chapter 3 verses 1 to 14. So the bit that really struck me when I was preparing the thought for today was... Um, verses 10 and 11 it was when the crowds asked him because he almost gave him an impossible situation he was saying you know you need to bear fruit and they said what should we do then and in reply he said whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none and whoever has food must do likewise John the Baptist was speaking here before Jesus begins his ministry and he is preparing the way for Jesus who will continue with this message of generosity, of love, of justice and inclusion for all in society. I was working in the food bank on Friday and we fed a family. We heard that they had been incredibly busy on Wednesday but most shocking for me was that in April, 
Just last month, our local food bank fed more people than it ever has and for the first time ever provided food for more children than adults. That suggests that uh, families are really struggling at this time. Thank God that we have the food banks and the volunteers to run it. My daughter Katie, who lost her job as soon as lockdown began, is now on universal credit. And I have to say it's not enough for her to be able, even able to pay her share of her rent, let alone anything else. The longer this goes on, the harder it is going to be for many in society. So how, as Christians, do we respond? If we really hear the message of the gospel today, we must do all we can. And I know many of you will already be doing that. I think the last time that I was speaking, I might have said that I'd signed up to receive the big issue by subscription. And I have at last um, received it. Did I show it to you? I can't remember, but it's this one. It's a wonderful front cover with the big word hope on it. I, don't, I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to receive the letter that came with it, just part of it. It says, Dear Nikki, thank you so much for your ongoing support and for subscribing to The Big Issue in these unprecedented times. For the first time since launching the magazine 29 years ago, the coronavirus crisis forced us to take the devastating decision to stop selling on the streets for the health and the safety of our vendors. This decision has had an unimaginable impact on our vendors, both financially, financial, financially and emotionally as well, as the big issue also as an organisation. The vendors are micro-entrepreneurs that have chosen to work themselves out of poverty by selling the Big Issue magazine. And for many, selling the magazine is not only their primary source of income, it also offers them much needed business skills, life skills, and of course, the social interaction that we're all missing so much. All of this is now unavailable to our vendors during this horrible crisis. Through the amazing work um, support of people like me who are subscribing, they're able to carry on their vital work, supporting over 2,000 vendors across the UK. So with each, each subscription, what they're doing is giving 50% of the net proceeds to support the vendors whilst they're unable to sell on the streets and 50% to the big issue to enable them to continue to be there for the vendors. They've got a small frontline team there and it's working round the clock to contact and support as many vendors as possible daily, helping them with cash, with supermarket vouchers, with bills, most importantly for many, emotional support at this time when they feel most vulnerable and isolated. There, are, there is much more information if you're interested in finding out more about The Big Issue um, at bigissue.com. And I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but the big issue is one thing that I just think is such an important thing in our society. It's about the vendors being able to help themselves to change their lives. And so they say a big thank you to everyone who is supporting them. And they carry on. Please do not underestimate how crucial and important your continued support is. We and our vendors need your support now more than ever. And then there's a lovely thank you from a hero of mine, Lord John Bird, who is the founder of The Big Issue. The Big Issue is a great read and I really do recommend it and their work. And of course, there are many other charities working locally um, who support the homeless and we just give our thanks to all of them at this time. It must be very difficult. Even just this morning, I saw a uh, Facebook post um, from um, St. Martin's in the Field in London, the church who work with very much with homeless people in London. And they were saying that not only are people now hungry, but they're also seeing people who are thirsty in our society. It's almost unbelievable. So I came across this prayer and I hope you don't mind me using it now. I'm just going to give you all a wave because I love giving the waves on Facebook. So this prayer, let's just take a moment A prayer for today. O oh Lord, may we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. 
May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or paying the rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those children who will go hungry with no school meals. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those with no place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we can't physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbour. Through Jesus Christ, whose arms of love embrace us all. Amen. Beautiful prayer, written by someone called Cameron Wiggins. I want to finish with um, the canticle and the blessing from our Celtic daily prayer. Christ as a light, illumine and guide us. Christ as a shield, overshadow us. Christ under us, Christ over us. Christ beside us on our left and on our right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek and yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom we speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek and yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. Beautiful image of Christ all around us. And a blessing for today. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again in two our doors. And I so look forward to the day when our church doors are back open. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you all have a really good day today. And just remember those people who are really, really struggling at the moment. God bless you all. Take care. Bye.